With the exception of new legislation to bring in High Speed Rail 2, the only two bills of note for energy and infrastructure in this year's Queen's speech are of course energy and water, both of which make a reappearance from last year. The energy bill, which of course implements the government's electricity market reform process, now has an added consumer element, which may or may not have been the result of a slip of the tongue by the Prime Minister at the dispatch box. The long-awaited energy bill uh, now looks to be passing through to report stage in the House of Commons sometime at the beginning of June, and through to the Lords, hopefully just before summer recess. The long-awaited water bill, uh, which has been greeted largely enthusiastically by industry, sets to reform the, uh, the market, hoping to improve competition, bring down barriers to entry and incentivise investment. Both sectors have experienced mounting frustration at the slow pace of development with these pieces of legislation. Climate change makes a surprise reappearance in the Queen's speech this year amidst rumours that it was the UK who was proving an impediment to the issue of climate change being a priority at the upcoming G8 summit. It seems now that under pressure from William Hague and Ed Davey, the UK has reversed its position and will now support climate change as a G8 priority. A last mention then to Labour's alternative Queen's speech, which includes three consumer-facing pieces of energy policy. The first one to abolish the current energy regulator Ofgem and replace it with a new regulator with much stronger powers to regulate prices. The second to return to something that looks a little bit like the pool system. And of course, Labour's promise to force energy companies to offer the cheapest tariff to those over 75.